Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 21st, 2023 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. Well, it was quite the eventful day with a lot of visitors and a decent flight. And if you stick around till the end, I'll tell you some funny stories about what happened today. The weather today was mostly sunny to mostly cloudy. The winds were pretty good throughout the morning, started out with a nice southwesterly wind that shifted westerly, but then eventually it shifted northwest around 1.30 and that kind of shut the flight down. But until that happened, it was a really pleasant day and a pretty big flight. I got out around sunrise today and the one interesting thing that was happening was there were a lot of flocks of Canada geese that were heading northeast out over the lake, which is a little unusual. Usually when we see the Canada geese, they're heading north or northwest but a little bit strange just to see them heading directly out to the northeast over the water. Here we have an American pipit, the first one of the season, and I was proud of myself because I heard this bird before I saw it and I knew what it was. For some reason, I always have a really hard time at being confident about hearing pipits, but this one was pretty loud and close and obvious. We had four eastern meadowlarks today, including a few that gave us nice looks as they perched in the trees. Here we have a snow goose, and remember that snow geese have black wingtips. And there was a decent number of snow geese moving again today, so we've really had a good year for snow geese, still um, getting over a thousand on most days recently. We also had a small number of tundra swans migrating today. This was the first juvenile red-shouldered hawk of the season. All the others we've been seeing have been adults. And notice the shape of the wingtips on red shoulders. They're just a little more blunt than some of the other beautios that we see. And here's the same juvenile red-shouldered hawk as it glided past. You can see that red shoulders have a little bit of a droop to the wing. That's something that you can use to help distinguish them from red tails, along with the fact that they usually look a little skinnier and their tail looks a little bit longer. Here we have an adult red-tailed hawk gliding overhead, and you can see the dark patagial bars in the shoulder area and the belly band. And we know it's an adult because of the dark trailing edge to the wing and the red tail. Here's an adult bald eagle, and there was a moderate migration of bald eagles today, not as many as yesterday. Um, I think we ended up with 20 for the day, so kind of a, a slow but steady migration, but not the, the numbers we saw yesterday where we had twice that many. Here's the top side of a male American kestrel, and you can see that they have sort of an orangish back, and that the wings are a combination of blue and black. And here's the underside of the same male American kestrel. I saw this bird coming and went for my camera because I wasn't sure what it was and it ended up being an American goldfinch but it turned and gave a nice top side view and they're kind of handsome when you see them from this angle just with the overall pattern of yellow along with the, the black with the bold white. Here we have two sandhill cranes and now we're also starting to see great blue herons as well but remember with the cranes overall they're kind of pale looking underneath. I guess you would call it a gray color maybe a little bit tan. And they usually fly with their necks straight out compared to great blue herons, which usually curl their neck into an S. And on the sandhill cranes, you can also see they have a red cap on the head. But sometimes from a distance, that doesn't stand out. And if you watch them, they also have quite a different way of flapping. Um, sandhill cranes usually hold their wings very straight and they have a very stiff flap. Great blue herons usually curl their, they, their wings into a bit of an M shape, almost like an osprey does. We're starting to see more and more horned larks. Instead of only seeing one or two at a time, we're starting to see groups of 10 or 20 sometimes. So nice to see those. Turkey vulture migration is continuing to pick up. Today we had about 450 migrating turkey vultures and numbers should continue to increase over the next few weeks as we reach the peak of the turkey vulture migration at the end of March, beginning of April. Here's an adult male northern harrier, also known as a gray ghost. Here's a group of four sandhill cranes. Here's a great blue heron, and notice what I said about sandhill cranes hold their necks out straight, but on the great blue heron you can see it curves its neck into an S. So the head and neck doesn't really stretch out far in front usually. They do occasionally stretch their neck out straight, kind of like a crane, so you have to be careful of that. But in general, this is the posture you'll see them where the feet really stick out, but the head is kind of curled back. The other patterning you see where it kind of has a two-toned blue top side with the dark blue and the lighter blue, and then this little bit of red. That's all typical plumage that you'll see. I'm kind of at a loss for words of how to describe what's happening here, but it looks kind of fun. And we had this immature great black-backed gall towards the end of the day, and look how big that bill is on this thing. 
All right, taking a look at the eBird list for today, I had 61 species. And looking at hawk count for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 452 turkey vultures, 20 bald eagles, 9 northern harriers, 3 sharp shinned hawks, 4 cooper's hawks, 38 red shouldered hawks, 31 red tailed hawks. And for falcons, we had 2 American kestrels for a total of 559 migrant raptors. I had two new species for the season, which were the American Pippet, and I also saw a great egret that dropped in on the other side of the bay. And that got flagged as rare on eBird. I guess it's just a little bit early for those, and I was pretty surprised to see it myself. And looking at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking cloudy with a high around 50. Light east-southeast winds that look like they're going to shift to a northeast lake breeze in the afternoon. So not great migration weather. Um, looks like they took the rain out of the forecast, so we'll have to see how gloomy of a day it ends up being, but not a favorable wind direction in the afternoon. Uh, the light east-southeast winds in the morning are okay, I guess, but I, I don't have high hopes for tomorrow. I know there's a field trip coming, and I hope for their sake that we do get to see some birds, but it won't be as good as it's been today and yesterday. For Thursday, looking cloudy with periods of rain, high in the low 50s, winds west-southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So that's a good wind direction, but my concern would be it looks like a pretty rainy day, and that may prevent any sort of raptor flight. For Friday, it's looking cloudy with a high of 38, winds northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So looking a bit colder, northwest winds aren't our greatest, um, moderately strong, so I wouldn't expect much to happen on Friday, but we'll keep an eye on it. And I guess I'll end with a somewhat embarrassing story, which is today I got pooped on by a bird. So I'm standing there minding my own business and Grace, who's sort of our unofficial intern, she comes over and said, uh, you just got pooped on. She said, I saw it happen. And so I take my coat off and all over my left shoulder and the hood of the coat was bird poop and it's it's funny that it even happened because there were like no birds overhead i mean the, the hawk migration was way off towards the lake i don't even remember seeing birds overhead so i can't even <laughs> imagine what it would have been um it's not like we had a big flock of geese directly overhead when it happened so i don't know maybe it was a gall um i don't know and so you know i dealt with it in good humor and then actually there was someone else who was up on the platform at the same time who a few minutes later realized that they had been hit also um and they weren't like right next to me or anything so um i guess it it worked out kind of well that it landed on my shoulder and not on top of my head or something um so i just took the coat off and i had to wash it tonight so um not the biggest deal in the world but i guess every job has its risks and hazards and when you're a hawk counter i guess this is one of them but i guess i'll have to start bringing my umbrella with me just in case I also want to give a shout out to Richard Neighbor, who stopped by today. Richard is the president of Genesee Audubon in Michigan, and he gave everyone these nice Genesee Audubon pens. And he's basically traveling along the Great Lakes and stopping at different hawk watches. And yesterday, Brandon Brogel, who's the counter at Derby Hill, he texted me and he said, look at the visitor notes for Presque Isle Hawk Watch in PA and Hamburg here in New York. And I looked and he had been at both of those hawk watches yesterday and they mentioned that he was heading over to Braddock Bay today. So I sort of had a heads up that he was coming. And actually, I wrote on the totals board, I said, welcome, Richard Neighbor. And uh, I actually got a photo with him next to the sign saying that. And uh, I told him, I don't want you going back to Michigan and telling them that Derby Hill's better than Braddock Bay. So we got to treat you good here. So everyone knows that Braddock Bay is the better hawk watch little bit of a rivalry going on but it's all in good fun and uh anyway next he'll be heading over to derby hill so we'll see he's he'll be he'll be the one to make the final call which is the better hawk watch braddock bay or derby hill but i think he had a pretty good time hanging out with us at the braddock bay hawk watch today and like i said next few days looking so so um but a lot more migration to come over the next few months so hope to see you out at the platform sometime soon from Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.